Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I am here to bring you a live paper crafting class and you're going to hear, you're possibly going to hear some noise in the background. Um, we have remodeling going on in our house right now and um, I asked the guys if they could quiet it down from 11 to 12. <laughs> But we'll see. We'll see. They were hammering right up to the 11 o'clock mark. So let us talk about what we're going to do today. Oh my gosh, I forgot my paper. It's over on my computer. Hang on. I'm grabbing it. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? I have been ready since, oh gosh, two hours ago I was ready for this, except for a couple things, obviously, because I got distracted. So let me just put this up. Hang on, it's my script. So um, it is Wednesday. It's Wednesday, May 25th, as I'm broadcasting to you live. And I'm gonna show you a fun card that uh, I thought of when I saw the message in the, the stamp set that I'm gonna use that said, um, sending a little message. And the uh, stamp set has a bottle in it and it goes along with all these fun products and stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to create a message in a bottle type card. Um, I put my husband on a wild goose chase for sand. We used to have a sandbox in the yard and we no longer do. So obviously all of our sand is gone. I said, well, can you go to another um, neighbor's sandbox and steal some of their sand? And then I thought, well, maybe I can use salt. We just don't live close to sand. And um, I thought maybe we collected sand from like a, a past trip. Maybe we'd have it in a jar somewhere. No. So um, I sent my husband out to go shop for some stuff. And I said, you know, see if you can find some sand. He couldn't. And then he thought of this weight thing that he has. This, uh, I don't even know what it is, but it's some kind of weight that he filled with sand. And so we opened that up and yay, I have sand. Okay, so that's the, that's the, uh, the way that we got sand. But I wanna tell you that there is a link um, in my favorite extras page. So if you go to my website at stampyourartout.com, I have a page called my favorite extras. It's under the shop tab. And if you click on that, you can see links to purchasing certain things that I use that aren't Stampin' Up products. And I found some sand on Amazon. <laughs> so if you are in desperate need of sand like I was, and you want to make a bunch of these cards or at least one or whatever, I have a place for you to get it. So good morning to all of you. I'm seeing the comments roll in. We are live. Um, it's 11 a.m. on May 25th. If you're watching while we're live, you can comment by, um, you know, uh, voicing what you want to say in the Facebook thread if you're watching on Facebook. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, then you just have to make sure that you're logged into your YouTube or Google account and then you're, you're able to comment during the live. And we have some moderators, some people who are helping me out there. On Facebook, we have Lisa Marshall. Um, so please say hello to Lisa Marshall. She is there to try to read everyone's comments and answer as she can. And then we have um, uh, Trisha Josephs on YouTube. Her name stands out a little bit. She has like a little wrench symbol next to her name. And so she will be answering questions on YouTube. And with YouTube, you can actually tag her. You can type the at sign, the A with the circle around it, and then immediately start typing T-R-I-C-I-A. Her name will pop up, Trisha Joseph, so you can click on it. And then your comment or question will stand out even more to her. So thank you gals for joining and helping out with that. Um, we will have a prize drawing at the end of this video for the YouTube live commenters. And then afterwards, a week later, we draw for a couple more prizes from anyone who comments after the YouTube live is done, or if you're watching on Facebook and you're commenting now or within that next week, you'll get entered into a prize drawing. So we have prize winners already picked out from last week. So yay. All right. So let's go down to my desktop because I want to show you this card and then I should probably show you... Um, I should probably show you the uh, supply list first because I was getting all excited. I brought my trimmer in and I was going to show you that. Okay, hang on here. I think I'm going to make this a little bit larger. There we go. This is the card we're making. <laughs> Very fun, right? Look at that. It's a bottle and it has sand in it. Yay! You can shake the sand if you want to, which you know, whenever you have a shaker type, type of card, everybody who receives a card like that wants to shake it, right? So it's a very, very fun, um, 
fun card to receive and make. Uh, this little message here is some printed vellum that we have that looks like it's just printed paper. And then, of course, you heard where I got the sand from. You can see the bottle design on the inside. So there is a stamp and there are these things called shaker domes that coordinate with the image of the bottle. This stamp set is another stamp set. So I'm actually using two stamp sets on this card. I'm using another one called Oceanfront. So let me show you, why don't I show you where those um, supplies are to be found. I mean, you can always shop for supplies. If you go to my website at stampyourartout.com, you can click on the shop tab and you can see um, you know, all these products online there. Uh, but you can also access these things from the catalog. So the Bottle of Happiness, or I'm sorry, Bottled Happiness stamp set, and then you can bundle it with the punch because there's a punch there. This um, can be found on page 16 of the new annual catalog that just got released this month. So you can see it's got some fun stuff here. We got a couple bottles that you can punch out and then there's um, another size bottle, a label, some floral pieces and some sentiments. We're gonna be using this sentiment and we're gonna be using this bottle on our card and of course the punch. And then we also have in the mini catalog that is still current and will be current through the end of June, we have the Oceanfront stamp set. Now this stamp set does not come with any words. So I think of it as a supplemental type of stamp set. It's one that you would bring in when you want to um, add to another card that you're making. So um, we'll definitely add a sentiment set to this card, right? So we're gonna be using this image here and this image, and then we've got some sand that we'll, we'll be using on our card. Now I've marked this other page here because this is where you can find the vellum that is used to make the little message, um, the rolled up message. So I used the 12 by 12 layering designs vellum, and that's on page 33, and then Oceanfront is on page 39. Okay, here's the vellum, so you can see that. You can check it out. We've got some black and white um, designs that are similar that are printed on the vellum sheets so that's kind of like a map this one here has some script going in different directions um, really close up it looks like like a um, I don't know it, it looks handwritten okay and then you've got the uh, printed like newsprint kind of design and that's the one that we're gonna be using today so actually you get a ton of these sheets and um, you, could, you could make a zillion of these cards with one pack of vellum. So, should we move over to the other screen here? Let me um, pull up, oops, hang on. You, you guys don't see what I'm doing, do you? I know, I always assume that you see what I'm doing here. There, okay. <laughs> so this is the sheet that you'll be able to access. You can print it off from my blog post. And how do you get to my blog post? I'm going to have this card um, and this video, uh, photos of the card, this video, um, a supply list that's clickable with photos in it. The measurements will be there. All of this will be on my blog at um, about 12, 15, so a little over an hour, you'll be able to access that. And in the YouTube description right now, you'll, you can see the link to that blog post, but it won't be active until 12, 15 central time. Um, for Facebook, when this video is done, I will quick try to copy all of this information over into the um, Facebook video description so that you can also access this. So when you get to my blog post, you'll be able to print off this sheet. So this PDF will be printable. It has the photo of the card, well, close up. It's got the name of the project, message in a bottle, today's date. It's got all the measurements in imperial and metric. So yay, metric. And then um, we've got the supply list there as well. So, oops. <laughs> um, so you can see in the supplies uh, that we're gonna be using the vintage bottle punch and the shaker domes. Now there's also a fun supply that a lot of people are getting with the shaker domes. I'll show you that, but we're not gonna be using it on today's card. And then we've got the list of all the card stocks, the stamped, um, stamp set, or I'm sorry, the stamp pads. And then we've got um, the tools, 
all that kind of stuff. Now I've listed at the very bottom a special grid paper and that grid paper is available to purchase but it also comes with a fun starter kit special this month that ends in about a week. Um, I'll talk about that more towards the end so consider it. <laughs> and then the imperial measurements you'll want to check those out. If you feel like taking a screenshot you totally can. <laughs> How many zero zeros in a zillion? Oh gosh, are you going to test my math out right now? <laughs> I'm not going to, I, yeah, okay. I'm tempted to figure that out, but I have to keep moving on, otherwise I'm going to stall. So let's go ahead and make this fun card together. Um, you can see on the inside, it's got some nice stamping. Um, the white piece here is the same size as this white piece here. So that's why in the dimensions, we have the... Um, two pieces of that white. And then we've got a layer behind it that is soft suede. Um, there's also a couple other hidden layers. So let's pull out all the layers after we've cut this piece here. Did anyone? <laughs> Trish answered her. A lot. Yes, somebody answer her though. <laughs> okay, um, so we're gonna cut this card in half this direction. This is eight and a half by 11. So this is the 11 inch direction. We're gonna cut it in half at five and a half inches. And then we're gonna turn this piece this way and we're gonna score it halfway. And if this is eight and a half, we wanna to go to four and a quarter inches. So we're gonna score at four and a quarter. And now we have our card base done. The next piece that we'll need is our soft suede. Our soft suede piece measures just over four and a half. So it's four and five eighths. Let me zoom in. I'm a little far away from the measuring the ruler there. So four and five eighths by three and three eighths. So that will be a layer on the front. Then we've got two of these white pieces that are slightly smaller. So four and a half by three and a quarter. So that one layers right up on top. This one will go on the inside. We have some hidden layers. So these two are hidden layers. We have a window sheet piece that's two inches by three inches. And then we have um, another piece of basic white and that is one and three quarters by two and three quarters. So you can see that that layers in there pretty well. We just wanted our white piece to be a little bit smaller than the window sheet. Um, okay. And it really doesn't matter actually. It just made me feel more comfortable if it was smaller. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take this stuff out of the way. Our vellum, our printed vellum piece is one and a quarter inches in this direction and one and three quarter inches in this direction. And it is important, the size of that vellum, because I'm gonna show you a finished card that I did. Well, first I'm gonna show you this. So do you see these fun things in here? Minus the pink one. This is, um, these fun little guys are called effervescent elements. And if you look at them, they look like bubbles that would be in uh, a carbonated beverage, right? And there's all different sizes in there. I don't even know how many sizes. Maybe the description in the catalog tells us, but there's really teeny tiny ones. And then there's ones that are about this big, which are just over an eighth of an inch in diameter. I colored this one with a blends marker, but I'll I'm gonna tell you right now, it's really messy to do it that way. So I wouldn't recommend coloring these guys unless you feel like getting really messy. Um, instead, you can see how these kind of look like they're a little bit more greenish. It's because I have the mint macaron uh, stamp pad behind. So I stamped the bottle in mint macaron on that, that card. And so what happens is because these are clearish, I mean, they've got an iridescent glow to them, but they're clear, so they actually um, bring through the color that's behind them. So that's how I guess I would try to, you know, enhance a color on these things, is just to have a color behind, okay? Alrighty, I'm gonna close those up. We aren't using those, but now I'm gonna, that leads to this card. So you see what I did here? I put in that vellum um, rolled up piece of vellum in there but it was super long and so it stuck straight into the bottle and then it doesn't have any tip you know it doesn't tip down so it doesn't look very natural um, that piece is two inches uh, tall in this direction so I made it a little bit shorter in fact I made it too short and I made it to one and a half inches 
And then this one just kind of fell. I'm going to show you one of these shaker domes here. It just kind of fell to the bottom like that. And I didn't want that look either. So by making it one and a quarter inches, it's going to work a lot better, I think. It has more of like a, a tipped look, okay? So you can see it's tipped in the bottle there. Um, the effervescent elements in here, after I made this card, I said to myself, Rachel, um, is there supposed to be water and bubbles inside the bottle? <laughs> so, so I changed my mind and thought it'd be better to put sand in there, something dry. Otherwise, your message is going to get going to get wet, right? So yeah, I decided not to use the effervescent elements on the card that I'm going to share with you today, which is this one. But I do have a photo of the other finished card on the blog so that you can see that as well if you like the bubble look. Um, it is fun. It's sparkly. Uh, but I, I think it would get the, the message all wet. So now we're going to go ahead and um, what do we do with this? Oh, you figure out which side is the front side. This is the darker, so we want to have that in the out. And we're using a bone folder. And do you see how I'm holding this? I'm holding my thumb against the bone folder like this. And it's just right along this edge, but it's not like on top of the edge. It's more like to the side of it. And so I hold it like this with the paper between, and I pull outward. And as I do that, it actually gives the vellum a bit of a curl. So that is how you curl with, with a bone folder. So after you've given it a bit of a curl, then we're going to use the tear and tape adhesive. And we're going to put just a bit on one side like that on the inside. Okay? Then I'm just pressing it down in there, peeling off the backing, and I'm going to start rolling. And this paper can be rolled you know, flat even. It doesn't have to be super circular or anything, but you want to roll it pretty tight. And if you leave it like that, it might eventually pull away. So we're going to add a bit of um, linen thread. And I have the really old <laughs> container of this stuff. I don't use it that often, which is crazy because it's really cool um, fiber type embellishment. Uh, it's, a, it's like a a twine. It's called linen thread and it's a natural color so it matches the crumb cake really well and I I wrapped it twice you could wrap it three times whatever you want to do tie it then cinch it oopsie tie it cinch it hold it steady and then tie a knot and that'll just reinforce your um, your tear and tape adhesive that you have in there plus it gives it a fun finished look as if it's been, you know, wrapped by somebody so that it stays nice and round inside the bottle. So now we've got our message, we've got our sand, we've got a little fun spoon to help spoon the sand into our bottle. Now these guys I also have a link to on my favorite things. Um, this is, I didn't find these the exact ones that I purchased on Amazon so I sent you directly to um, the, the source that I had purchased these from, it was, I think the source was Websterant.com. So they sell like restaurant um, type supplies and stuff. All right, here we go. Let's stamp away. So, and I've got little bits of sand on my grid paper. <laughs> We're going to bring in this fun thing called a stamp and Pierce mat. Um, I have a few of them. I have one that I do not pierce or cut into. Um, I use that as my one that I stamp on. And then I have others that I allow to pierce into and I don't necessarily want to stamp on them. But why do I stamp on this surface? Because we're using, oh, here they are. We're using photopolymer stamps, so totally clear stamps. And what's different about these stamps is they don't have that rubber in between, uh, the foam in between the rubber part of the stamp and the block. So you need a little bit of a cushion, especially with a more bold image like this. This is a bolder image or a larger surface image. We're going to be using the Balmy Blue ink pad. I'm kind of close, aren't I, here? Um, so um, there we go. A square knot. I could have done a square knot. Susan Sanders says a butcher's knot. I don't know what a butcher's knot is, but I could have done a square knot. I just tied it and it held. <laughs> My other ones, I tied the same way. It held. It's holding pretty well. 
Okay, so you're gonna ink up your stamp. And when you ink up your stamp, we just talked about this last night in a team event that we had. Um, don't, don't push. Don't push into these pads. These are firm foam pads. You literally just have to tap on top um, just to get the ink onto the surface of your, of your um, stamp. Now, I am going to position this, and I think it was an inch and a half. So I'm going to position this onto my grid paper, and I'm going to imagine a line going right through here, which is about an inch and a half down. I'm going to, I'm going to check to make sure, because I want to give you, yes, it's a little over an inch and a half. So we're going to go slightly higher than an inch and a half, if you care. <laughs> and we're going to stamp that, and I'm stamping at an angle, so I, I hope, I hope, I hope that I'm straight. That looks pretty straight. So it's actually like an inch and three eighths. If you want to get, you know, a card that looked exactly like mine, it's an inch and three eighths down. Let's check. Yes, it's about an inch and three eighths, maybe a little more. Okay, after you've stamped that, then we're going to go ahead and punch into the bottom. And I've turned my punch upside down. Our punches, even though you feel like you want to put the paper in here, this is what you actually push on to punch and this is where you insert your paper is in here. So we're going to insert our paper and we're using it upside down so we can see where we're punching. You can see the edge of the paper popping out here. So I'm just gonna hold my paper so that I can feel that edge and I don't see it, I just feel it, okay? And I'm gonna punch, I push the paper all the way in, I'm punching and it's not gonna be even because this is three and a quarter inches um, in this direction, right? Did we do th yeah, three and a quarter? So it's not perfectly even, but it gives me space to put a cork on the bottle because we want to have a cork um, to hold that um, to hold that in, right? So let's go ahead and add some soft suede ink and our cork image, and we're just gonna put that right here. Can you guys see? Hopefully you can. Right there. So I just corked our bottle. <laughs> All right. And what else do we need to add? We need to add some grass, some grass that grows by the, um, by the side of the ocean. And I'm using mossy meadow for that. I wanted kind of a not so bright green. And if you want to, you could even stamp off and then stamp again to get kind of a lighter green image, or you could even stamp again to get an even lighter green. So your choice. After I made this card, I thought, hmm, I may have wanted to stamp it a little bit lighter, but I didn't. So we're just gonna go ahead and use the full color, but I wanted to give you some choices. So one of these um, pieces of grass you can see is behind the bottle. And the way that I did that is I just made sure that nothing was kind of peeking out um, on the side here and so I stamped it like that okay so there's one and you can see the rest of it went through onto the grid paper and then I inked up another one and stamped it over here so it was kind of going right behind the bottle the neck of the um, the neck of the bottle and it's touching the ground okay once we get the bottle put in there, it's all gonna make sense a little bit more, but that's how that piece goes on, or that stamp image. And then we're gonna use the soft suede to do our message at the top. So we're gonna ink up sending a little message and that's gonna go right up at the top and center. And look what I did, I had ink on my fingers. We're gonna have to make sure that that gets covered. Rachel's getting messy today. How'd that happen? I think I touched the side of the ink pad. Okay, so sending a little message that's going to get stamped up here at the top and centered. And then the um, rest of the stuff down here is sand. And because, in, see how I have my message up a little higher on that one than I did on my other one? I'm going to make my sand come down a little lower then because if this sand kind of has the same amount of space underneath it as this sentiment has above it, I wanna kind of even that out on this card too. 
So for the sand, I did do the stamping off or second or third generation. Um, and I just stamped it onto my paper once. And then I came in and stamped underneath the bottle like that. I saw the question, how will you mail this? That is a great one. This particular card, if you look at the side, is super thick and you definitely don't want to flatten this out. So this one, unfortunately, would have to get mailed with a bubble mailer, which costs a little bit more. So, um, but it's worth it. <laughs> or you can give it in person, but this one is definitely going to have, I mean, you cannot, you, you can't have that even chance going through a machine. So I would definitely mail that as a package, a bubble mailer type package. If you put it in a regular envelope and put the um, non-machinable stamp on it, there's still a chance sometimes that those get processed through the machine. And it would just frighten me or scare me if, if you made this beautiful card and then boom, you know, it was ruined. So I, I guess I would pay the extra postage personally. Okay, let's keep putting some sand on here. So we're going to stamp off, we're going to come in, and you don't have to keep using the same side of the stamp. You can come in and stamp it a little bit differently the next time. You know what I mean? So now we've got some sand underneath there. We can't, oh, we can't put these away yet. Let's go ahead and stamp our other white piece. Our other white piece is going to go on the inside of our card, and that one looks like this. So we've got a little bit of sand down there and then we've got the mossy meadow ink again and the sand grass <laughs> ocean grass I don't know what kind of grass this is it's it's green that's going on the inside <laughs> all right and then we have another stamp and we're gonna use that with our last piece of white so this got punched out. You can, you know, use that for some other project if you want to or trash it. But on this piece here, this is our smaller white. This one measures mm, one and three quarters by two, two, two and three quarters? One and three quarters by two and three quarters. This one's gonna get stamped with the bottle, okay? So again, just lightly tapping to ink up and you can see the ink is on the bottle now and we're gonna stamp that in the middle and press it down and that's going to go behind our now now you'll be able to see kind of a fun look here that's going to go be behind our little window area that we've punched out isn't that cool now it's coming together right very fun all right let's close up our ink we're done with inks i'm just going to bring in these stamp sets one more time so you can see the images and see what i used for the card you can see the sentiment and the bottle came from bottled happiness stamp set and then uh, right there and there and then the other three images come from oceanfront okay all right next we're going to take oh, let's move this out of the way too we don't need that anymore we're going to take our shaker dome. So your shaker domes, I believe you get, yeah, I think you get 10 of them in a pack. Um, to separate them, you, you just kind of have to use um, either like a scissors or some kind of pokey tool or your fingernails if you can get between. But each shaker dome includes a peeling release paper on the back side and a peeling release paper on the front side. Okay, and so you want to, um, how did we do this? Oh yeah, we want to release the front side first. So we're gonna take the front layer. I just had it too, Rachel. Why'd you push it back down? <laughs> You're gonna take that, that sticky release paper stuff off. It's not actually sticky, sorry. You're gonna take that release paper off and you're going to Place this down on top of your bottle right there, like that. So now we've got our bottle on our card. Ta-da! There's the other side. We're going to fill this, and then we're going to close it off. And that's where the window sheet comes in. 
because if we fill this and then we try to close it off with a stamped image and I've tried I tried it you guys it's hard if anybody has tricks for this let me know but I tried to put my stamp image directly behind like that and it was it was difficult <laughs> like you could have it go off center you know that sort of thing so we're gonna put a window sheet on first it's gonna be super easy that way and then we'll put this over the top so let us put our little message in here this is so fun you guys oh my gosh what a cute little container let's put the message so that the knot is in the front there and then we'll bring in our sand scoop it with a spoon and I want to get like different size pieces of sand in there too um, I would say amount of sand um, one of these tiny little teaspoony things they're not even a teaspoon um, gosh I don't even know how much that would be what is that like an eighth of a teaspoon does that sound right those of you that cook a lot more than I do so you're just gonna pour that in there and brush off any excess because all that excess is gonna get onto the release uh, after you pull off this release paper it's just gonna get on that sticky area and you don't want that you don't you want this release paper um, the stickiness behind this release paper to be totally free of sand okay okay so now we put this on top and we seal it all in press 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 I got a little tiny sand there Shh. hopefully it won't affect anything okay Kim lives five minutes from the beach well then you need to send me some sand <laughs> no I have plenty now that I know where it is but you should have seen me scrambling I'm like I've got to go buy sand somewhere I don't have any sand it's so sad now this piece here can just go on this back side and what I recommend is just to take your tape actually let's use our tear and tape because it's gonna be easier to put on there with tear and tape just put some tear and tape on either side of your bottle here without it showing beyond the you know the window area peel off the backing where's my take your pick tool I didn't bring it out today Rachel <laughs> why don't I have my take your pick tool out here and then you can flip this over because of course the sand isn't going to go anywhere and then we'll just place that in there so everything lines up sorry I'm going to angle it towards me first and then I'll angle it towards you okay so you're just going to place it in there like that and it's going to hold on to the back now you can give your um, message a little tap oh this one's going to be stubborn because I didn't tie it tight enough <laughs> okay you know what I did wrong on this one I know exactly what I did wrong I did not roll this up really skinny so it is definitely like it's 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 um it's holding on to the sides of the bottle <laughs> so I'm trap tapping it trying to get that one end down yeah it's just it's being held there what if I push <laughs> I'm gonna break my bottle okay so lesson learned tie your little message super tight so that it can move around in the bottle like this one does see how this one like if I go this way with it well it was tipping the other way earlier anyways <laughs> this one's tipped down it's better we'll just say that I am so sorry yes roll it up tight um, okay next is to add some tear and tape adhesive to the back side of this whole thing like this and you want to use tear and tape because on my other card and I'm going to show you that in a minute um, it is not put on with tear and tape and what happened was it still pulls away because you've got this bump here there's a bump that's created from all of this so you could solve that problem by making a wider section where the you know the card gets stamped but then your bottles gonna be kind of off to the left a little bit because you can only go so far in I think it was probably closer to a fourth of a tablespoon Lori thank you for the the thought um, um, a half a I'm sorry a teaspoon a half a teaspoon 
I don't know. That might be a little too much because you want it to still move in there. But maybe I put too much, maybe I put too much sand in. Um, so yeah, if you were looking at what I had there, maybe it was a half a teaspoon and I had too much. But this is a live video and we're not going back. We're not doing this over. <laughs> so, so learn from my mistakes. Do not put too much sand in and do not put a really wide message in, right? Hey, I have a snips here I can peel this up with. My fingernails are getting, um, are starting to break. I think it's because we have a lot of construction going on here. And so I'm constantly, after they leave at night, I'm sweeping up all of this dust and stuff, like the dust that from sanding the walls upstairs and stuff. It's crazy how messy it gets. I think they all went to lunch because I cannot hear them. Okay, that gets placed on here. You just want to press on all the sides and here you can see it's it's peeling away because I only use seal adhesive. So I have to go back and I have to make sure that this is redone. I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to re, re adhere it with tear and tape. But I wanted to show you that you need a super strong um, adhesive here between these two layers. And you could even use like the Tombow multi-purpose glue. Um, jars uh the jars from the jars of uh from the love jar yeah what set is that again that that's not that's no longer with us right i'm trying to remember because i don't think i have those shaker domes anymore come on tape there we go so now you want to just adhere the rest of this you can put it on with tear and tape or you can put it on with seal i probably should have put this onto my card before i <laughs> before i adhered it to the white but that's okay now we've got that added to the front we've got this going on to the inside of the card and we're going to be done and i did find over here on my table this um this uh little container here we'll open it up like this we'll show the one that's tipped <laughs> hang on a minute i gotta push something up here because it's yelling at me Hopefully, yeah, hopefully we're still getting, it looks like we're still getting a good broadcast. Um, this here is the container that I got my spoons in. So you can see Reflections Petites is the name of the brand. It's a four and a uh, 4.2 inch spoon. So, um, but there's 50 that come in here. So I just wanted to tell you, uh, warn you about that, that there's a lot of spoons that come in here. <laughs> so there is that finished card and then we'll just bring in this one here too as a sample so you can see all three of them um what do i want to talk about we have prizes coming up oh did you guys enjoy that by the way isn't that fun what a great way to send a message to somebody whether it's a birthday message or i don't i didn't put anything on the inside of that one because i wasn't going to finish it but i am now um, but whether it's a birthday message or a message of good luck for graduation um, uh, a message of I'm sorry that you're feeling sick you know sending a message and thinking of you those are great sentiments to put on cards so um, definitely definitely will be a card that I will finish off with another sentiment on the inside when I'm ready or I'll just start writing on the inside um, I love it who was that that just said that she's from France Veronique Veronique uh, Veronique Veronique is that how you say it um, thank you for chiming in and saying where you're from. I love it when, you know, because this is 11 a.m. Central Time in the U.S., in the Midwest area. And so we've got this range in the U.S., um, not counting Hawaii and Alaska, but we've got this range going on from 9 to noon of when I start. So it's kind of ideal time for those of us in the U.S. So when somebody chimes in from Europe or even South Pacific, I'm like, oh, my gosh, somebody's chiming in from way over there because it's late for you, I know. Um, but yeah, comment away, tell me where you're from, tell me if you like the card, tell me tips, ideas, things that you might have done differently or might, how you might change it up. I love hearing those ideas too. So what do we have for news going on? Um, I'm gonna talk about the news and then we'll do prizes and then I'll, I'll let you go. Um, so news, we have that starter kit special. It's only going on for one more week. If you visit my website, my blog at stampyourartout.com, there is a tab that says join the fun. And if you click on it, uh, the second, uh, second section down um, talks about getting the starter kit. So 
the starter kit. The starter kit makes you officially a demonstrator. But I will tell you that a majority of people who get the starter kit are in it for the discount, as it is with almost all of these direct sales companies. I mean, like I got oils from Young Living so that I could get a bunch of oils and I got the kit so that I could get all those oils, right? But I never sold it. So there's there's a lot of people that do that and it's okay. It's um, These companies welcome that. In fact, 95% of the people, I, somewhere around there, um, get the starter kit just for the discount. So I don't want you to feel like um, that would be a bad thing if you did that because it's not. Um, but you might get hooked and just have so much fun while after you've gotten the starter kit that you'll stay because <laughs> that's what I did. Um, but yeah, you officially become a demonstrator and then what happens is you get a discount and you can continue to get that discount as long as you stay active. If any of you have ever dropped as a demonstrator, you can come back. You can come back, you can get the starter kit and try it out again. Continue to get that discount, okay? So feel free to do that. Um, what is the deal with the starter kit this month, Rachel? I know, I'm so excited. I'm not even talking about the deal. The deal with the starter kit this month is that you get an extra $66.50 worth of in-color product. You get all the stamp pads that are new, the five new in-colors. You get a variety pack of cardstock in eight and a half by 11. You get the designer paper that's six by six in all of those colors, and you get the grid paper. This is the Tahitian Tide Sheet from that grid paper pack. So you get a whole little packet of grid paper that you can purchase. Um, all those things you can purchase, but you can also just earn it free in a starter kit. The starter kit is normally $99 plus tax. Shipping is free. Um, the business supplies that you would get in there are not something that you would get charged for, so those are free. Um, and then, of course, you get the extra and above the $99 because you get to pick up to $125 for only $99. Um, so, and then the in color stuff. Anyways, it's, it's a no brainer in my mind. <laughs> okay. What else is going on? Um, oh, pre-order is going to begin for us demonstrators. Those of us on the demonstrator side of things, a new publication is coming out again. Uh, that is called the July through December mini catalog. It's going to start in July for everybody, but in June demonstrators get to purchase from it. So um, you get to uh, do that if you get the starter kit this month, right? No, anyways, so all of us who are on the demonstrator side of things will start purchasing things soon and showing them, them on, you know, blog posts or Facebook Lives or whatever. So you're going to see start to see some new products being shown that you cannot necessarily get unless you're a demonstrator at this time. But hang in there if you're not, because July 1st, that catalog will begin. Um... And then there's gonna be a BOGO sale coming up. So if you have on your list of wishing things that you wanna get, and it includes any of the kit collection kits, save that order till June 1st, because in June, we're gonna have a buy one, get one 50% off sale um, throughout Stampin' Up. So if you purchase, say, the new um, Million Thanks kit, um, and you want two of them, you can get one at the full amount, and one for the 50% off. Margaret asks, um, do you get a discount every time you order? Yes, you do. You get a discount on every order and it's at least 20%. Um, it's a guaranteed 20%, but sometimes it goes up even higher depending on other things. So um, like the amount of sales that you have, if you have a team, that sort of thing. So yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to show you, if we have time, is the remodel, but I won't, you know what, let's do prizes. So let me pull this stuff out of the way here and pull in the prizes that we had from last week. Basically, it's these multi-variety um, packs of six by six designer papers. So I'm gonna go over to my computer and I'm gonna click on that screen right there, Rachel. Here we go. This is um, the winner from the After Live comments on YouTube. So congratulations to Miss Karen West. Yay, Karen! And then we had a winner on Facebook from the after, um, from the live and after live commenters, Colleen Hall. You were the person who was drawn for um, winning on Facebook. Both of you need to reach out to me though. Um, I have a really difficult time getting a hold of people, uh, so please reach out to me. I try my best, but it doesn't. I it's hard. It's like detective work. 
So um, some weeks I, I don't even try because it's just so hard. It takes a lot of time. So forgive me if I haven't tried to find you, but reach out to me. My email address is stampyourart.com at comcast.net and you can claim your prize. If you are someone who lives outside the U.S., instead of me mailing you product, I can mail you or email you a tutorial bundle. So there are ways to um, still win, even if you're not within the U.S. So now on that note, I'm going to bring in the other prize, Choices. And let's see here, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's throw in six. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my desktop and you can see I have all those extra spoons. So we're gonna throw in six of those silver spoons and a choice of, sorry, let's take that off for now, a choice of these four prizes. I have a Stampin' Pierce mat that was slightly loved, but it's not pierced into. I used to hold in-person classes and I tell you I had a ton of these. This is my last one. The last one that I, um, I mean, I have four others, but those are mine. So this is one that you can claim as a prize, or you can claim a half pack of the Waves of the Ocean paper, which I will cut down to six by six to make it easier to mail. And then I have, um, this is a pop-up garbage from Stampin' Storage. Uh, I love their products. So it's got a little Stampin' Storage uh, logo on it. But that is a prize if you need a little garbage pan that, or pail that can kind of sit next to your workspace. And then I have one of these, Effervescent Elements. I have a whole packet of those. So the first come, first, cho first choice, first come, first choose. Um, is that how you say it? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to peek over at what Trisha has called out for our live winners on YouTube. Um, let's see here. I'm going to scroll really quick just to see if I missed it. There they are. Peggy Dixon and Deb, Deb Sumption. I think that's how you say it. I'm going to scroll back here and see if I can see her post in the, in the comments that are rolling through here instead. <laughs> I guess, you know, what? it's interesting how the timing is off on all of these. It's so crazy. So again, Peggy Dixon, and, oh, and Deb Sumption, Sumption. So way to go. Oh, there they are. See, there's the, there's the names. Oh, cause Linda, <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> um, I know I can see it on my computer, but sometimes on my iPad, I miss them. So all of you guys reach out to me and claim your prizes. Next week, there'll be a couple of these left over and you get to pick from them if you're one of the after live winners. Again, everybody will get six spoons too. So, cause I have too many. I have too many spoons, so I might as well share them. Oh my gosh, there's nothing on my table. <laughs> Do you all want to take a walk upstairs? I'm not sure. Oh, my battery's low. This will not work. All right, you're just going to have to wait for pictures on my... Um... Shoot, and it was at 100% when I first started. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this anyways. I'm going to see if we can do this anyways. Hold on. I'm going to turn... Okay, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Let's see. I'm, I'm kind of doing this in my preview to see if this works. All right. Are you ready to go on a walk? I have another little phone with me. So um, we're going to go on a walk. <laughs> you get to check this out. So this is my, this is my house. And it's in kind of a destroyed state. It died, didn't it? I'm so sorry, you guys. It died. <laughs> I had an extra phone here. I wonder if I can pull this one out. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's try this instead. Okay, now we're going to go on a walk. <laughs> oh, why do I even have my room showing? Hang on a minute. I just realized that. You guys can't see me there. So I'm going to take and just do this. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. So here is the house. This used to be one room, and this used to be one room with a divider in the, in the center. And uh, yeah, they have, they have taken the wall down. Look at their feet in that beautiful new flooring. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, 
coming back downstairs. There's there's junk everywhere. It's a crazy, messy house. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Anyways, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> that little field trip. So many of you have been asking. I will be sharing pictures, but believe it or not, we really are in the midst of remodeling. They're all sitting out in their, their vehicles right now in my front yard, uh, right outside my front yard. So I'm gonna end this video so that they can come back in. Um, next week we'll be live on, on YouTube and Facebook again. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get, no and actually click the little bell too so you get notifications of when I go live. Please give me thumbs up if you're on YouTube. Um, Facebook, YouTubers, if you can share this video, I really appreciate it too. It helps bring more people to our parties every week. Next week will be June 1st. Oh my gosh, June already. So I will see you back here, 11 a.m. Central Time on June 1st. Thank you all for joining me. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye.